Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Western Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We have an awesome lineup of institutions for you to hear from this evening. But before I turn things over to them, I do have a couple of housekeeping items for you all. First of all, um, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you this evening. Secondly, I hope that you're going to find that this is a really fun way to learn about multiple schools in a short amount of time. And so there are more sessions. There's two whole more hours after this. So we hope that you will go um, to the website at the bottom of the screen to sign up for additional sessions. This is being recorded this evening and the, the recording will be available within one week at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. That's the same place that you can go up to go to sign up for additional sessions. Next, um, we know that you're going to have questions during the presentation, so feel free to put your questions in the Q&A at any time. Type out your question, but also note the college or university that you're directing your question to so that our panelists can answer appropriately. And finally, this is what's called a six by six program, which means there's six colleges and they only have six minutes to share um, great information about their institution. So we hope it's just enough that you get a taste, but then you also are going to do some further research. So without further ado, I am going to turn it over to them. Our first presentation tonight will be from Loyola University, Maryland. Michael, take it away whenever you're ready. Hello, how are y'all doing today? My name is Michael Decker and I'm with Loyola University, Maryland. Just give me one second. Hopefully y'all can see my screen. If not, let me perfect. know. It looks and perfect. so my name, like I said, is Michael Decker. I'm our West Coast Regional Director. So I work with all of our students from out West to go to school in Baltimore, Maryland. So for the majority of my West Coast students, about five, six hour flight, um, I always say it's two movies to get to Maryland. So you'll fly into BWI Airport too. Um, when you see our campus, we are actually a truly residential campus. 84% of our students live on campus all four years. Um, but the neat thing is we're in the city of Baltimore. So if you're looking to go into school in a city, this might be the perfect place for you. That picture is actually the Inner Harbor. When I actually visit campus, since I'm based in San Diego, I stay in the Inner Harbor. Um, you're within walking distance to Little Italy if you're craving pasta. If you want to walk to Fells Point and get crab cakes or uh, ramen, there's it's really a neighborhood city, which I love. Also, the great thing about going to school in Baltimore, Maryland, for example, if you're a political science student, you can get down to DC in about an hour. Our forensic students are also going to DC and working with the FBI. So lots of opportunities. Our business students are doing internships at Under Armour in the city of Baltimore. So lots of opportunities. There's one other thing I wanna point out in this picture. And the young lady holding the Starbucks bag, um, we actually have a Starbucks on campus, but that is actually the building behind her. That is our admissions office. So if you are looking to uh, tour campus, we do in-person tours right now and we do in virtual tours, that's the building you'll be looking for when you visit our campus too. Hey Michael. So, yes. We're still seeing your green screen. Oh, sorry about that. No worries. <laughs> and this is the one. So Starbucks, just remember, Starbucks is going to be our, um, Starbucks is going to be where we're located for campus dining and that, or not campus dining, where we're located for our tours. And then the Inner Harbor, that's where a lot of students are doing internships. The Ravens play there. Um, the Orioles play down there. Just a great place to go, especially if you're visiting our campus too. So Loyola by the numbers, I know the first thing usually students will ask me when they ask, well, how big are you? We are about 3,900 undergraduates. So average class size is going to be about 20 students. Faculty student ratio is 10 to 1. Um, sorry, 12 to 1 this year. We fluctuate a little bit. And we have no TAs teaching on our campus. So you are going to be taught by professors, which is kind of cool too. And then another great thing is you don't have to decide right away. We have over 30 majors to choose, 35 majors to choose from. You can come in as a business do major and maybe do accounting, but also do creative writing. You can double major, major minor, or come in as undecided. About 40% of our students are coming in as undecided. We are, another thing somebody will sometimes ask me is they'll say, well, Michael, there's other Loyolas. There's that Loyola that played basketball in March Madness, Loyola Chicago. There's one in New Orleans. Um, what's the difference? 
St. Ignatius of Loyola founded the Jesuit University. So four of us have chosen to take his name. There's actually 27 Jesuit institutions across the United States. So also um, Marquette, Xavier, Gonzaga, you hear a lot of them during March Madness, um, St. Louis University, um, Regis in Colorado, um, who else am I thinking of? Santa Clara, lots of schools are Jesuit. It's how we teach is the same. How we teach, how we educate you is gonna be the same, but we're all different universities too. And another great thing is we do love our students to study abroad. As you can see about 60% of our students study abroad. So it's not if you're gonna study abroad, it's when you're gonna study abroad. We do um, about 40 different countries. And if you do it during spring or fall, it's gonna be covered in your tuition. If it's um, taken during the summer, it's gonna be an outside purchase. Some things I want you to keep in mind since you're probably a junior right now, we are a common application school. You fill out one application, you can send it to multiple schools. Um, scholarships will typically range anywhere from twenty dollars to $30,000. And with that, 200 students will ask, well, what does it take to get in GPA? As you can see, 3.63 is our middle um, 50%. We are test optional. We've been tested, so I'll put test scores there if you'd like to submit them to us, you definitely can. But we've been test optional for about 10 years. So you could definitely um, come test optional and there's gonna be no pressure with that also. And then the other thing is I could tell you about how great Loyola is till I'm blue in the face, but I'd really encourage you to do a one-on-one -on -one admissions chat with us, very similar to this. Um, we have admit we have tons of webinars, everything from meeting faculty to student-led tours um, to just presentations that are a little bit longer than this. And then the other thing is, if you are planning on visiting Baltimore, we are doing in-person tours. We're only allowing 10 students in the morning and 10 students in the evening and then um, or in the afternoon and one parent apiece too. So keep that in mind. If you have any other questions, my name is Michael Decker and I'll drop my contact info into the chat too. Thanks and have a great day. Michael, thanks so much to you and the University of uh, or Loyola University, Maryland. Next up, you'll have the opportunity to hear from the University of Maryland. Take it away, Larry, whenever you're ready. Thank you so much, Courtney. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Larry Kalanji, and I am the West Coast Regional Admissions Coordinator for the University of Maryland, based in Los Angeles. Uh, I'm excited today to talk a little bit about the application process, as well as more information about University of Maryland College Park. Here, just to get started, here are Maryland by the numbers. UMD is now ranked number 19th among public universities and number 15 for most innovative schools by the US News and World Report undergraduate rankings. We are a tier one research institution and a part of the Big Ten Academic Alliance. At University of Maryland, we have about 30,000 undergraduate students with over 800 clubs and organizations on campus. So there is really something for everyone. Recently, we were voted number one best college for LGBTQ students by Campus Pride, and we also have 19 Division I NCAA teams. Um, I always tell students the setting of your studies is a leadership lab. Uh, you know, we are uniquely positioned right outside of Washington, D.C., uh, about 10 miles from the White House and about 20 miles from our state capital in Northwest Maryland. Uh, we are surrounded by three major international airports that makes traveling to uh, and from your destinations very easy. Uh, Turks can enjoy the abundance of cultural, professional, and recreational opportunities Washington, D.C. has to offer. And so many of our students decided to intern or work for uh, federal agencies, uh, cultural experiences, the National Smithsonian Museum, and also the Cherry Blossom Festival. Uh, at University of Maryland, we have 12 academic colleges plus letters and sciences, uh, which is an advising house for students that are undeclared or undecided. Uh, we have over 90 academic majors and programs students can double and triple major or declare a major and minor in another subject. Our most popular majors are computer science, engineering, biological sciences, psychology, government and politics, and business. And so the best learning doesn't always happen in the classroom. Uh, at the University of Maryland, we offer unique experiences that go beyond textbook academics, such as faculty led research, community service, and our living and learning programs where you will be able to get to uh, live in the dorm 
uh, with the same students that are in the same major as you are part of. Uh, we do have uh, limited uh, enrollment programs uh, because of their strong reputations. Uh, they're highly sought after majors and we must limit enrollment to maintain program quality. And so as a result, these programs have competitive requirements beyond the initial standards of the university. Uh, I know it's a little bit early, but uh, more information is early on, the better. Uh, university of Maryland, uh, we are now on common and policy applications. Uh, we do require two letter recommendations, one from your teacher and one from your counselor. Uh, we love to see your performance inside of the classroom as well as outside the classroom. Uh, for the fall of 2021 and spring of 2022 applicants uh, will be test optional, uh, which means that you do not need to submit your uh, test scores in order for your applications to be complete. Um, however, once you submitted the application, you will have to indicate if you want to submit your test scores or not. Once you submitted that application, you will not be able to uh, change that decision. So think very, very carefully about submitting your test scores or not. Um, again, you will not be disadvantaged for not submitting your test scores, and this go with our merit based health as well. Uh, we do require one essay uh, since we do not have an interview process. Uh, this essay uh, will get uh, for the admissions committee to get to know who you are. Uh, we do require one activity uh, list or resume. Uh, we love to see you doing service, if you're doing any, uh, if you have uh, leadership in any uh, clubs and organizations, we would love to see that as well. Uh, University of Maryland is an early action school and our deadline is November 1st. 90% of the admitted class is taken from this school. Um, so please apply by the early action deadline. Early action is non-binding. Uh, some schools will have incentive considerations for honors programs as well and merit scholarship. And so that concludes my presentation. So uh, please follow us on social media at Apply Maryland on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook to check out what's happening at University of Maryland. Uh, I will share my contact information on the chat as well as how to get into our mailing list. And thank you for joining us. And with that, I will pass it back on to Courtney. Thank you so much, Courtney. Larry, Larry, my goodness. Thank you so much for to you and um, the University of Maryland. I, we really appreciate your great presentation. Next up, we have um, the Catholic University of America. So take it away whenever you're ready, Catherine. Hi everyone, my name is Catherine Pierce. I am one of our assistant deans of admission at the Catholic University of America. I am currently based in DC, but beginning in August, we'll actually be moving out to Southern California um, to be regionally based and work with our West Coast students. So a little bit of background about Catholic um, and our break down of the numbers. We're located right in DC. We have about 3,100 undergraduate students. Being the Catholic University of America, about 80% of our students do self-identify as Catholic. Um, but of course, we're welcoming to all. So you don't have to be Catholic to attend. We're all about meeting you where you're at in your faith. And if you want to grow in it, we'll help you with that um, as well. We have about 30% diversity. 8% of our students are international. And we have students that come from all 50 states and about 46 countries as well. Uh, we have over 70 majors, over 60 minor and certificate programs, and the average class size is only 19 students with a student to faculty ratio of 10 to 1. Um, when we were founded, we were actually founded as a global research institution, and we are the second oldest graduate research center in the United States. Um, and on campus, we have 31 on-campus uh, research centers. One of the best things about us is we're tucked away in the northeastern corner, so you still have this own campus that you're able to call your own. It's 100, I guess, at 176 acres. And we're only three and a half miles from the National Mall. So you can go to Washington Monument, to the Capitol, to the Lincoln Memorial, um, the Tidal Basin, everywhere in between within, you know, a 10 to 15 minute metro ride. Um, you can get a kind of a feel for what our campus is like here. We have all of that green space, which is really wonderful. Um, and of course, with our location, what's also really wonderful is that we have 
over 3,000 internship um, opportunities. About 76% of our students do at least one internship. 61% do two or more. We're actually the only school in DC with the, our own Metro stop on campus. So that's really helpful too for getting downtown um, and being able to participate in an internship. If you want to study abroad, about 40% of our students choose to do that. We have 115 programs in 37 countries. And we also have our own flagship campus in um, Rome as well, which is very exciting. Um, sorry, my screen <laughs> just froze. Um, as far as academics, as I mentioned before, we have a lot of different options. What you can do is when you apply to Catholic, you'll apply into the major that you're looking to study. Um, so we have 79 undergraduate programs, 12 schools of study, nine of them pictured here are our undergraduate programs. If you're undecided, that is okay and completely normal. We have an undecided option within our School of Arts and Sciences, an undecided option within our Bush School of Business, if you're interested in business, but just not quite sure what area you want to go into, yet. We also have an undecided option within our School of Engineering as well. If you're eventually looking to pursue a master or doctoral program, we also have 144 graduate and doctoral programs as well. Um, as far as the application process goes, we are also on the common application. It is actually free to apply. We do not charge an application fee. We have two different deadlines. Um, the first is November 1st for early action and early decision. And the second is January 15th for regular decision and early decision too. No matter what application deadline you apply for, you're fully reviewed for admission, for um, merit scholarship as well. So um, if you... you you know, want to apply for the earlier ones you can. If you need a little bit more time in the fall to apply, you definitely have time until that January 15th deadline. We are a test blind institution, so we do not look at test scores as part of the application review process. Instead, we take a very holistic approach to reviewing your application, looking at the courses you've taken in high school, obviously your performance throughout those. And then we also look at, of course, your extracurricular involvement and your interest in Catholic as well. Um, we do automatically consider you for those scholarships. As I said before, those range every year from $17,000 to $32,000 a year. Those are renewable for all four years. We do have a parish scholarship that you can apply for if you belong to a Catholic parish. Um, and that $4,000 scholarship is renewable and stackable on top of the $17,000 to $32,000 a year. And if a parent, sibling, or grandparent attended, we also have a $1,000 legacy grant for that as well. For both the parish scholarship and the legacy grant, you would need to apply for those on the common application. And they're part of the Catholic U questions. So what's next? Definitely feel free to reach out to me with any questions. I'll put my information in the chat. Um, if you want to learn more about Catholic, we can schedule an interview or a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Um, it's definitely more of a conversation just for me to get to know you a little bit better. Um, you can take a virtual tour, or if you are coming to DC at any point throughout the summer, we'd love to have you on campus. We are offering tours um, in a small capacity, um, definitely making sure that we're taking all social distancing measures and safety um, into consideration, but we do have our tours up for the summer as well. Um, so hopefully we will see you on campus soon. Um, and if you have any questions, like I said, I'll put my information in the chat. Thank you all so much. Thanks so much, Catherine, to you and the Catholic University of America. Wow, we've already heard from three great schools, but we still have three great ones to go. Audience, don't um, be shy to put your questions in the Q&A, and I, our panelists will be um, answering those as they are able. Next up, I am excited to present to you Whitworth University. Take it away, Tess, whenever you're ready. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. My name is Tess Abbott. I'm an admissions counselor at Whitworth, the sole West Coast representative in this group today. So I'm having a great time hearing a little bit from the other universities. Whitworth is located in Spokane, Washington. So we are part of the great Pacific Northwest. Spokane is on the Eastern side of Washington state. It's the second largest city in the state. There are some awesome opportunities in Spokane for our students. Uh, it's a big enough city to provide a lot of opportunities, but it also kind of feels like a small town. I'm from a pretty small town myself and came to Spokane for school, and I really found it to be the perfect size for just what I needed. We do have four real seasons, including a real winter. So if you like being outside, going skiing and snowboarding, or doing more spring summer activities, uh, the, Pacific, the Pacific Northwest is definitely a good place for you. 
A bit about Whitworth, I always like to talk about our mission. Whitworth is a very mission-centered institution, so this is important to us. Our mission is to provide our diverse student body an education of mind and heart, equipping graduates to honor God, follow Christ, and serve humanity. It's a bit of a run-on sentence, very wordy, as many mission statements are. Some key things to focus on. We are a diverse student body, diverse in many different ways, racial, ethnic, social, socioeconomic, cultural, religious backgrounds, all of that is really important to us to bring to campus and share perspectives. Despite being a smaller school, we really want all of our students to represent different parts of our world. Uh, we do hope to provide an education of mind, of course, we're a higher education institution, but we also wanna help educate your heart, knowing that you will uh, experience a lot of things over the four years that you're at Whitworth, and we wanna be alongside you for that. And finally, we hope to equip our graduates to honor God, follow Christ, and serve humanity. We are a Christian institution, but we don't require Christianity or any faith at all from our students. If it's something you're excited about, we have some great opportunities for you, but again, not required. A small school, as I said, we have about 2,300 undergraduate students, which means awesome small class sizes. This is a really important characteristic of a Whitworth education. It's not just the size, the number of people in your classes, but what actually happens in those classrooms. Whitworth is a very relational institution. Our faculty have awesome opportunities to teach all over the country, all over the world, but they choose Whitworth specifically because they want those relationships with students. And they wanna support them inside and outside of the classroom. This also was very helpful for us because we were able to bring all of our students back in person to uh, take classes in person and live in the residence halls this past fall. And we feel even more confident about returning to our in-person operations for the coming fall while maintaining very, very low COVID cases on campus and keeping everyone safe and healthy. Here are all of our majors and programs. We have over 100 majors and programs. So uh, we are a small but mighty school in that way. Everything from accounting to writing, so many in between. Uh, I've highlighted in red here some of the biggest majors or our kind of most popular majors for us. Uh, biology, health science, nursing, really anything in any sort of healthcare, pre-professional, or just biology and chemistry department uh, will be very popular at Whitworth. And we have some awesome opportunities for internships because Spokane is kind of a healthcare hub for our region. We have four major hospitals. So if you are interested in health science or healthcare in industries at all, um, Spokane is an awesome place for you. Business, computer science, education, music, psychology, those are some other large programs for us. There is a lot going on on campus outside of the classroom. We have 10 residence halls. First and second year students will live on campus for sure, but you might choose to stay on campus after that. All of the residence halls have their own quirks and personalities. One is the original building that Whitworth was founded in and has cool, funky, lofted ceilings and layouts. And one is brand new with heated bathroom floors. So definitely a lot of personality and a great way to join campus right away. Over 40 student clubs, intramurals, uh, ranging throughout the whole season, four seasons worth of intramurals, and outdoor recreation, of course, because we are in the Pacific Northwest. We also have Division Three athletics if you are hoping to pursue uh, a sport on campus, 21 varsity sports overall. We participate in the Northwest Conference with other Oregon and Washington schools, and I will be honest, we are pretty good. Uh, we have won 12 all sports trophies for our conference um, consecutively, so it's always fun to be a pirate fan, but especially a pirate athlete if you are interested in playing your sport. We also have some really large art, music, and theater programs. This includes majors in all three of these fields if you are hoping to be a professional in these areas or really wanna dedicate some of your studies. But we also welcome students to just participate because it's something they have an interest, a passion, a hobby in. Um, we also offer scholarships in all three of these areas. If you'd like to apply to Whitworth, we are still reviewing some applications on a case-by-case -case basis right now, but our uh, application for fall of 2022 will open August 1st. Uh, it's free, always will be. We have one on our website and on the Common App. We are test score optional and have been for over a decade, as well as recommendation letters. Those are also optional. And we do rolling, rolling admissions so you can hear a decision within about three weeks. Here are some of those deadlines for you thinking ahead to the next year. 
Very brief financial aid info for you. 100% of our incoming first year students are receiving financial aid from Whitworth. Last year, that was an average of almost $35,000. And we are so happy to have been ranked number three best regional university values in the West. Our campus is open for in-person safe visits if you wanted to come visit. Here is my contact information. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'll answer any questions in the chat. Yes, thank you so much to you and Whitworth University. Next up, I have the pleasure of introducing Albion College. Take it away, Dana, whenever you're ready. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm shifting to the uh, Michigan part of our uh, panel today. So thank you guys so much. Surrounded by a lot of really great institutions today. Um, like Courtney said, my name is Dana Smith. I'm an admission counselor at Albion College, and I work with almost all of our out-of-state students. Um, so typically, I'm out there on the West Coast getting to meet with all of you um, and hope to be able to do that soon. I was to start a little bit about Albion in general, um, so you guys can get here where we're located. Um, anyone in Michigan typically will use their hand because we're shaped like a, like a mitten. And so we're right about here in South Central Michigan, about an hour and a half from Detroit, about two hours from Grand Rapids, right over the Ohio border. Um, so we're a pretty small community, as you can see here, about 1,500 students, pretty small classes, small faculty to student ratios. But when I talk about these numbers, what I really like to talk about is the stories behind the numbers. So what does going to a smaller institution really mean for you and for your future is that you're going to get really close, not only with the fellow students in your classes, but with your faculty members, with staff members like me or in our career services office, our academic resource center. Um, these are the people that are going to support you and help you plan out those four years and make sure that you're really planning and, and setting yourself up for success in whatever that next step after graduation is going to be. The people who know that you're interested in going to medical school, exactly what kind of medicine you're interested in, or getting you connected with an alum in Detroit at Ernst & Young, like those are all of the types of experiences that our students have. So looking down at some of these other statistics down here, two of the things that we're most proud of is our four-year graduation rate and our placement rate. So what that means is that of the students who start and finish at Albion, 98.5% of them are graduating in four years, which we know is really important to students and their families. And then not only are you having an incredible academic experience here, but like I said, we really want to prepare you for that next step. So 97% of our students are employed in graduate school or doing some kind of service within six months of graduation. Again, something we're really, really proud of as an institution. Diving a little bit into admission here, um, we like to start that liberal arts approach from the moment you enter our funnel. Um, so for us, we take a very holistic view to admission, but the biggest part is definitely your transcript, which will probably hold pretty true for most institutions that you apply to. But because we're a smaller institution, we do get to dive a little bit deeper into your academic profile. So I always encourage students to send recommendations. I love reading essays. We love le learning about what you've done in high school. So I really get to look at you as a whole student and it's me who will probably be reading your application, which is awesome. We are on rolling admission, so if we do have any seniors on this call, we are still reviewing applications, but mostly we're going to be looking forward to the fall to reviewing junior applications. And we are test optional. Um, that is a policy that is in, in place for this upcoming fall as well. Looking a little bit at academic programs here, this isn't even all of our majors. Um, if I would have put them all on here, then the font would have been quite tiny here. Um, so these are our overarching academic departments, and we've got some really fun new ones that are coming down the pipeline as well. Um, so we're definitely an institution that has been kind of pivoting with, with the environment of higher education it's, as it's been changing. And we're really excited about some of those new things. Um, kind of the thing that Albion is known for are our pre-professional programs. Um, you can see here that we really do a lot to prepare our students for that next step, being an entirely undergraduate institution. Um, and so some of our most popular majors coincide with those things, like biology and healthcare, econ and things like business and management, HR management, things like that, um, kinesiology, education, psychology. Um, those are our biggest programs, but something I always like to say is that those are just our most populated majors. Every single other program is equally well supported with full-time faculty members whose whole job is to teach you. They're all PhD, tenure track faculty who are really, really excited. You will be taught by them. We don't have graduate assistants since we are all undergraduate. So again, something we really pride ourselves on are our faculty and their commitment to your education. 
outside of the classroom is learning is just as important as inside of the classroom learning. So you can see here we have a ton to do on campus and our students definitely take advantage of that. Um, I often joke that the students on our campus, their email signatures are often longer than the emails that they send because they're involved in so many things, which is awesome. Those students really thrive and really get to combine all of their passions together. So we have over 100 clubs and organizations, everything from your more standard, you know, student activities group, student government, identity-based groups, club sports, to things like our Squirrel Watching Society and Brits Who Knit. Um, there's some really fun ones here. And if you don't find one that you love, you find and make uh, one that you enjoy yourself. We are Division Three Athletics and compete in the MIAA. And then we do have nationally recognized Greek life on campus as well. And both of those populations are really well um, kind of supported and, and participated in on campus. And finally, I wanted to end with a little bit of a discussion about financial aid. So every single student is gonna pay a different amount to come to Albion because we are very heavily based on students need based aid from the FAFSA. But every student who applies to Albion and is accepted will receive a merit-based scholarship between $23,000 and $34,000. And coming from out-of-state, also be eligible for some of that out-of-state grant, that Forks of the River scholarship on here. Um, students who visit during their senior year are also eligible for a senior visit scholarship. And we also have um, different need-based grants, performance scholarships, things like that as well. So we encourage you to send us your FAFSA, apply to Albion, and we'll be able to really have a deeper conversation about that. But that's all that I have for you guys. My contact information is here. I'll throw it in the chat. And thank you so much for letting me share more about Albion with you. Dana, thank you so much to you and Albion College. Our final presentation tonight will be from Northern Michigan University. Take it away whenever you're ready. Hi, everybody. My name is Erica Greeley, and I am uh, from Northern Michigan University. I'm really excited you guys are all here today. Uh, Northern is located in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan in Marquette, so we're right on the shores of Lake Superior. Our natural setting makes for an amazing outdoor experience, um, academic and recreational all year round. And many of our students love the outdoors, but you do not have to in order to thrive here. Marquette is safe, friendly, welcoming, and um, we have direct flights that will come in from Chicago, uh, Minneapolis, and um, Detroit. Uh, so you can definitely fly into one of those areas. Some of our students from the West Coast will drive. It's kind of up to you, um, but different ways to get to campus. But we are a place that celebrates all four seasons. So a good thing to keep in mind. We are a mid-sized institution. So we are large enough where we have a lot of programs to choose from. We have a strong alumni network. We have connections around the world, facilities that are nice, but small enough where you have small class sizes and your professors know your name. The average class size is about 28, average lab size and seminar sizes are about 15, but the size gives your professors the ability to get to know you on a personal level. Um, and those close relationships result in mentorship and guidance as you move through your experience at Northern and onto whatever it is you're gonna do next, whether that's grad school, joining the professional world, whatever. So we have over 170 different academic programs to choose from. So we have popular programs that are related to our natural setting, like fisheries and wildlife management, environmental studies and sustainability, but also things like nursing, art and design, criminal justice, sports science, a large array of business programs, as well as medicinal plant chemistry, which is the first of its kind in the nation, uh, and is now nicely complemented by our, by our um, indoor agriculture program as well. So no matter what it is that you're studying at Northern, you're going to have a hands-on experience. So that's going to help you figure out what it is that you love so you can get more specific or what it is that you hate so you can change your mind and shift to the program that's the right fit for you. Um, you're going to be working with real people in real settings in the professional world with real equipment and resources all um, so that you have a really good understanding and you're prepared to take your next steps again in grad school in the professional world whatever it is that you do next. So for students who are looking um, at Northern and have questions about the pandemic, we have been face-to-face -face this whole year um, and are looking at returning to on-campus activities that are the same as we had in fall of 2019. So we've been very careful about following CDC guidelines, um, making sure students are safe. Uh, and because things have been going so well on our campus, we are really confident about that happening this fall. So let's talk about student life. We have over 
um, 300 different academic programs to choose from. So there's a lot to get involved in. Um, and I already mentioned, you know, that students are outside all year round. So there are all sorts of opportunities related to that, but there's a lot to do inside too. So like I mentioned, you do not have to love the outdoors to thrive here. Um, we have over 300 student organizations to choose from. Um, they're academic and non-academic. We have leadership programs, um, some that are credit bearing and come with a stipend. And then we also have community service and volunteer opportunities. And all of these are a huge part of student identity at Northern. And of course, we also have a lot of events happening on campus too uh, that are gonna keep you busy as a spectator or as a participant. So ranging from the arts um, to sports, uh, including esports and football, both of which are scholarship granting. Um, so let's talk um, just briefly, we'll move into finances, but I just wanna mention that what's really important to us at Northern and our community is that we're safe and welcoming, regardless of your experience, your background or your identity or belief. So let's get into money. Uh, it's an important topic, especially amidst a pandemic. Um, so for our out-of-state students, um, the tuition and fees, room and board, amounts to around $28,300 per year. Um, but the average financial aid package for our out-of-state student is around $19,400. And that includes scholarships, um, including things like our National Academic Award, that brings that out-of-state tuition rate much closer to in-state as well as our Wildcat Achievement Award. Um, so this year we are awarding these with and without test scores, SAT and ACT scores, but actually Northern is now test blind, which means that even if you um, submit a test score, we're not gonna look at it. So we won't be using test scores for awarding scholarships um, moving forward. We also offer competitive scholarship opportunities, including our Presidential Scholars Competition with awards ranging from $1,000 to a full ride as well as other free money opportunities to take advantage of too. So we'd really love for you to come and visit campus and visit Northern. Um, we are offering on-campus visits as well as virtual. I know it's kind of a long way coming from the West Coast, um, but we'd really love you to make the trek to kind of get a feel for Northern and whether or not this is the right place for you. If you'd like more information, you can scan this QR code here. But again, my name is Erica. I'm an admissions counselor. I work with students on the West Coast and I would really love to hear from you. My job is to help you navigate this process um, of your college search and application. Erica, thanks so much to you and Northern Michigan University. Um, next up, I'd like to invite all of our panelists to turn back on their cameras and answer some quick questions. Um, can you guys share with the group um, what's your favorite event or tradition on campus? And we'll go in the same order that you presented originally. So Loyola University of Maryland up first. Perfect. So excited to share. I don't know if it's an event or a tradition, but one of the great things about our campus is 80, like I said, 80, over 80% of our students live on campus all four years. And our residence halls are top 10 in the United States, but I don't think that's why. I think it's because of our late night programming. On Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, we do programming specifically to keep students on campus. It could be a midnight breakfast, it could be a taco truck, it could be glow in the dark mini golf or a hypnotist just something that you can kind of roll out of your residence hall in your sweats and say, hey, what's going on this evening? And I love that. So for University of Maryland, um, I, I didn't graduate from UMB. However, I lived in Washington, DC uh, for about a few years. And so um, a lot of our students would commute to DC during Cherry Blossom Festival right around this time. And so um, it's just very easy to commute. And so a lot of our students do um, get out into the city as well. So. Um, for Catholic University, since we're located right in DC, as I mentioned before, it's super easy to get around with the Metro. And so every year, the first or second week of classes, um, we have an event called Metro Madness. And you're given this scavenger hunt, essentially, where you have to go downtown and collect all these, uh, you know, kind of do all the things on the list. Um, so it's really fun. It's a great way for our students, especially who didn't grow up in the DMV area um, to get to know the Metro and to get to see how easy DC is to navigate. Um, but it's also just such a great way to explore the city and also meet new people as well. So um, it's one of our students' favorite things. And I love that it's, you know, right when you start, you're thrown right into it, which is great. 
Awesome. Whitworth has um, a lot of traditions on campus, but some of my favorite are called the little three. These are three things that we encourage our students to do before they graduate. So you have four years to complete them, plenty of time. The first is to get hit in the head by a Frisbee. Hopefully it doesn't hurt too much, but you know, Frisbees are always flying around college campuses. The second is to drop a plate in the dining hall on accident. So it does have to be on accident. Everybody will clap for you if you do. And then the last one is the hardest. It's to catch a virgin pine cone, which means a pine cone that has never touched the ground. So as it's falling out of the tree, definitely the hardest one. I still have not done that, uh, but you can put that on your list if you come to Whitworth. Awesome. So one of my favorite traditions at Albion, I actually haven't gotten to experience yet because of the pandemic, um, but we have this really funny tradition on graduation. So there's this horn that sits in a case in our student center, um, and then it sits there all year, except we have tryouts for students to be the horn blower at graduation, and whoever comes in second place gets to hold the horn. So I'm really hoping that that will get to happen this year. Um, fingers crossed we're supposed to have it in person commencement, um, so I can finally experience it in person. Mine is probably what are called Dead River Games. So we have a, a Dead River Basin. There's a waterfall near campus that it's referencing, but um, it kicks off homecoming. Everybody goes to the beach um, and there's an obstacle course and there's this, uh, this challenge to, you're standing on a ladder and you're scooping ice cream and you're trying to drop it into somebody's mouth from a ladder. So there's just, people just have ice cream all over their faces. There's a boatload of people at the beach. It's really, really fun. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love hearing about all these fun campus traditions and I bet the audience is getting really excited about making one of those traditions their new tradition um, next year when they go away to college. Well, I would like to say thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope that you, um, as you listen to all these professionals, you also realize that they are truly here to help you navigate through this college search process. Um, as you close out, there'll be a qu quick four question survey. So we hope that you will provide us with some feedback and um, sign up for more sessions. There's still two more hours of this great format of learning about new colleges and universities. Um, the recording of this session will be available at strivescan.com slash WACAC. With that, um, I wanna give you our best wishes to a great college search process. Have a good one, everyone. Bye-bye.